The Mystery of the Locked Room. Walker, where are you now? Top of Bay, turning east on Davenport, just wasting gas. So? So what? Do I have a fare? No. Oh. So what's up? I just can't believe you told her. Oh, jeez. How many times do I have to explain? We were just talking, okay? And it just came up. You were just talking to your mother and the fact that I'm pregnant just happened to come up? Yeah. Without me agreeing that we should tell her without you even asking me? Well, yeah. It just came up. Hello? What time's your plan to get in tomorrow? Uh, the, the 4.30. I'm not going to talk to her. Krista? Hey, Krista. And it snowed, too. December the 3rd. I met Mom at the airport. She was kind of, well, weird. But I guess that was to be expected. She thought we were both crazy. She thought Krista should go and see someone. And when she said someone, her eyebrows went up about half an inch, so there was no mistaking who that someone might be. It surprised me. Sort of disappointed me, too, I think. But she's my mother, and mothers are fierce. She didn't want me to try to take on something I wasn't ready for. Might never be ready for. And Krista's in a wheelchair. Well, most of the time. She uses crutches sometimes for short distances, but she gets tired out. She's been like that, I mean, using a wheelchair since she was just a little kid. I don't see that it matters. Maybe I'm stupid or something. You're only 19. Her doctor says everything's fine, like normal. Her birth canal and everything. Well, that's nice, dear. I'm glad, but that's not the point. I love her, Mom. I really love her. Krista. I know. On our way out to Vancouver last summer, Krista and I dropped into Big River. She met my mother, my six sisters, my three brothers-in-law, all the rugrats, cousins, aunts, uncles, the dog. It took everyone about an hour to get used to Krista on her crutches, and like about another hour to fall in love with her. Even Mom. Especially Mom. But now, she just sat in the car and bit her lower lip. It didn't look good. When my father was alive, my mother was always kind of, well, high-strung. When my father died, my mother stayed in bed for a year. Then she got up and bought a bicycle. She used to ride it for miles and miles and miles in all kinds of weather. And she joined every organization within a 50-mile radius, fought with the town council, fought the mayor, ran for mayor, and lost. It took my sisters and me about another year to calm her down. And then she just became mom and grandma. And she really, really liked Krista. But now I could see that old kind of desperate look in her eyes again. Jeez. We're going shopping. Who? Your mom and me. I thought you weren't going to talk. Well, I can hardly ignore her now that she's here, can I? So no matter how humiliating this is going to be, I'll get through it. Okay? Great. Mom and Krista went shopping at the Eaton Center, Mom walking along beside Krista in her wheelchair. They looked really neat together. The day before I got Mom a room at the Rose Hotel, just below Carlton and Jarvis, because it was more or less near my place, but it was nice. I met them later for supper. They were still talking, so that was good, but I couldn't tell if the issue had been discussed or not. Listening to them was a little like watching a foreign film and trying to figure out what the plot was, or even if there was one. Suddenly, Mom looked at her watch, and now she was tired and wanted to go back to the hotel. I looked up at her, and she blushed. She blushed. And we dropped her off, Krista and she still talking, and then we drove over to Mr. Piatelli's cab company. I asked Krista what they talked about, and she said, I'm still mad at you. And then, about two o'clock that night... Walker? Walker, are you there? Mm, Queen and Woodbine heading east, and any clue to what's going on in my life will be gratefully accepted. Walker, pull over. What? Just pull over to the side and stop now, please. Why? Just do it. (sighs) 
Have you done it? Yeah, I have no idea why, but then why should this be any different? Walker, Inspector Kiss just called. It's about your mother. What? What? She's been arrested. What? For what? Are you going to be all right? For what? 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 Murder. Hey, hold on, son. What room are you going to? Room uh, 512. Bingo. If you can't go in there, there's been some trouble. I know. Come back here. What's your name? Inspector Kiss knows me. Come back here. Walker, Walker, Walker. You never cease to amaze me. And now it's your mother. I'm sorry, sir. He uh, wouldn't stop. No, he never does. It's all right, officer. He's uh, more or less a colleague of mine. Oh. Yeah. You put my mother in jail. I didn't have a choice. I can't get in and see her. She's not going anywhere. You'll see her in the morning. But she's my mother. She didn't do anything. She can't do anything. She's my mother. Inspector Kiss failed to follow my logic. He sat me down in the chair and told me to shut up. Then he told me to breathe deeply. Then he gave me a cigarette. There were two other plainclothes cops in the room. The one dusting for fingerprints in the bathroom. The other one taking photographs. The body had been removed. Male Caucasian, about 45 years old, stabbed in the ribs, couldn't get through, then under the ribs, and up into the heart. What with? Well, it seems uh, a very ladylike pearl-handled uh, letter opener. Oh, my mom doesn't have a letter opener. Oh, well, then that settles that, doesn't it? Now, look, Walker, you and I are buddies, right? I thought so. Then trust me, will you? We've worked together on other cases. We can see this one through, right? All right. Good. Now, are you ready to be professional? Yeah. Terrific. Here's the story. Seems about 1.30 this morning, a Mary Louise Devereaux... My mother. Thank you. ...came down to the front desk in her dressing gown and told the clerk to call the police because, uh, where is it, as she put it, a strange man is sitting in a chair in my room and he's dead. Sounds reasonable. I mean, that's what I'd say if it happened to me. So why did you charge her with murder? Suspicion of murder, charges pending. Why? Because, one, she said she put the chain on the door before she went to sleep. So, the murdered man and the murderer were both hiding in here somewhere before she chained the door. And the murdered guy sat calmly down in the chair and allowed himself to be stabbed silently a few times so she could wake up and see him sitting there. Two. There were a couple of empty glasses, drinks from the mini bar on this table. Three, why didn't she use the phone to call the front desk or the police or anyone? It would have been faster. Because... Okay. Because she's telling you the truth. The, the chain was on the door. That's why, which meant the murderer was still in this room. Which meant she tried to get out of here as fast as she could. That's why she didn't use the phone. Yep. Uh, Walker, guess what? There were bed sheets stained with blood hidden in a suitcase. What? The guy was sitting in that chair when we got here, all right. But that's not where he'd been murdered. He'd been murdered in the bed. What? In the bed. Inspector Kiss just stared at me with those cold black eyes of his. He's not such a bad guy. He even sort of looked away. In the bed. If I hadn't already been sitting, I think I would have fallen down. Nowhere for anyone to hide, see? <laughs> now, the bed's too low. I mean, if she didn't murder him. She didn't murder him. Yeah, well, okay, there's no room anyway. Now, maybe behind the curtains, but your mother says she checked. What else did she say? Uh, she turned on the light by the bed. The guy's in the chair. Mm -hmm. She stifles a scream, goes over to him, sees he's dead. She looks at the door. His chain's still on him. Right. Looks around, grabs her dressing gown. Or she already has it on. Yeah, all right. Well, she's got it on. She glances at the curtains. There's no one. The closet door is half open. Okay. Only her coat hanging up. She doesn't see anyone in there. She moves to the door, passes the bathroom. No one leaps out at her. A nerve-wracking second as she rattles the chain off. Opens the door, and she runs down the hall. So, the killer was in the bathroom. Walker, 
It's a fairy tale. She was in the bed, wasn't she? She said so. So was he. Hello, Walker. Good morning, Krista. I saw a lawyer. You look awful, Mom. What'd they do to you in here? He's very nice. Legal aid or something. Nothing. I've just been up all night, that's all. Yeah, well, so have we. Oh, Walker, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I've got ten minutes. I don't I don't know what to say. That's all right. You don't have to say anything. Yes, yeah, she does. Oh, she does not. Not if she doesn't. I, I feel... Oh, God. Stupid. Yeah? Well, it's pretty stupid, all right. Walker. <laughs> we can't help, Mom. But you have to tell us the truth. They know that man had to be in your room before you chained the door. They know he was, like, you know, in the... The thing. The bed. Yeah, in the bed. And you took the sheets and hid them in your luggage? Walker! What? You're gonna have a heart attack. She had these dark shadows under her eyes, and she'd been crying all night, I could tell. And my heart was just beating, beating, beating. My mom's sort of good-looking, I guess. Her hair is gray, blonde now, and she's put on a bit of weight, but you don't notice much because she's always been kind of lanky. It was my father's word for her anyway. They were always teasing each other about everything when we were little kids. Ten of us counting the dog. I never thought of my mother like, you know, separate. Well, she was separate now. I felt like she was miles and miles away. She said she told everything to the lawyer. I said, well, tell it to me, but she wouldn't. She just sat there. Then she said, Walker, go and sit in the car. I want to talk to Krista. So what'd she say? Here, just throw my crutches into the back, will you? So what? What what? You know what, what, what? You sound like a duck. Oh, come on, Krista. Well, she did say to tell you. Yeah? Yeah, she just felt embarrassed, you know. Like you might not understand. I'll understand. Okay. Well, first of all, she knew him. Donnie Bridges. Donnie Bridges? Yeah. They went to school together in some place called Marathon. Marathon? Yeah, so, so he was back in Big River, something to do with clearing up his mother's estate. This was a few months ago. And they met. First time in years. Yeah. So they started to, like, date. My mother? Yes, of course your mother. You know, you have a real funny attitude about this. I don't even want to think about it. <sighs> anyway, most of the time it was more or less long distance because he lives, lived in Toronto. That's the other reason she was so quick to fly down here. It gave her an excuse. Jeez. So the first night she was here, he met her and they went out for a late supper. It was really romantic, I guess. And then the next night... After we left and went to work, they went up for drinks. Jeez. Oh, they hadn't really done anything up to this point. You know, intercourse. Mm. But everything had been so wonderful. Your mother decided she'd invite him up to her room this time and, you know, just see what happened. So he came up. And they talked. And they had a drink together. And things were going along really well. And your mother... She told me she thought, why couldn't she have some happiness, too? That's when she put the chain on the door. As a kind of way of saying yes without saying it, you know. And he was getting undressed and she was feeling shy, so she went into the bathroom and got into her nightgown in there. When she came out, he stretched out on the bed and... And dead? <laughs> no. He'd... Well, fallen asleep. Bastard. She didn't know what to do. She tried to wake him, but... He was snoring away blissfully, so she just covered him up, turned out the light, and got on the other side of the bed. She couldn't fall asleep, though. She just lay there, thinking this couldn't be happening. It was just too mortifying. And what could she say to him when he woke up? After a while, she doesn't remember exactly how long, she went into the bathroom. Then she came back, lay down again. It took her a few moments. 
But then she realized something was different. It was the sound of his snoring. He wasn't. The room was perfectly silent. She looked at him, he seemed the same. She turned on the light. And there was the pearl-handled knife. The letter opener. And blood seeping out of his chest. Oh, Mom. Jeez, Mom. Walker, she knew whoever had killed him was still in the room. So she just ran for the door, ran down the hall, took the elevator down. But then she realized how it would look. To you. To her whole family. So she went back up to the room. She'd left the door ajar. It was open even more. She went in. Looked around. Then she dressed him. Put the chair by the bed. Hauled him onto it. Wrestled the chair away from the bed. Took off the sheets. Hid them. Remade the bed. And then she went back to the lobby again. And said... A strange man is sitting in my room. And he's dead. Case homicide. Mr. Piatelli gave me your message. What? Hello? Is this Walker? Yeah. Are you still a little hyped up, are we? Uh, which leads me to my question. Sleeping pills. Does your mother use sleeping pills? What? No. Why would she? Well, I, I can think of one reason, but we'll let that pass. Uh, now, you're absolutely sure this is important yes. for her? Yes. Well, no. I mean, well, she did, j just after my father died, but that was a lot of years ago. Do you remember the two little bottles out of the mini bar? A scotch and a vodka? Right. Well, the lab says the scotch, both bottle and glass, were laced with a certain kind of knockout pill. Now, that explains why the guy just lay there when the letter opener wouldn't go through his ribs. It was blissed out of his skull. Really? Now, this guy, Donald Bridges, was not the type your mother should have been running around with. Why? Well, because he's got a rap sheet that covers my entire desk. Petty cons, larceny, bad checks, fraud. Now, the last ten years or so, he's been specializing in, um... Well, women. Are you still there? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's lucky your mother knew his right name. He used dozens of them. He was from Big River. Yeah, right. <laughs> Under different circumstances, this might even be fun. Yeah. So run it by me again, Walker. Why have we rented this room? Is it just to check things out? I don't get it. It's not even the room she was in. She was two flights up. I mean, it's close enough. It's almost the same. Why don't you sit down for a minute? I don't have a minute. You have a minute. Sit down. You know something? This is the first time we've been on the same bed for like a year. Three weeks. Krista, you have to make up your mind soon, don't you? I mean, there's a time limit on these things, isn't there? Yes. Look, I, uh... I don't need any more time for the one thing. It's just for the other one. There's twins? <laughs> Stupid idiot. No. There wasn't really any question anyway. I knew what I was going to do all the time. I want the baby. You do? Oh, jeez, that's great. I mean, that means I'm going to be a dad, doesn't it? Oh, man, I can't believe it. I'm a dad that's going to be a little walker. Walker. Come here, Krista, come here. Oh. Walker. Yeah. When can we start on a new one? Walker. Yeah? Like, that's what I need more time for. I don't know what I want to do. I mean, about us. Oh. Everything's really changing inside me. I mean, in every way. I don't know what I feel anymore. I love you, Walker. But I just... don't know exactly how I love you. Does this make any sense? It just doesn't feel the same. Oh. Right. Walker? No, no, it's all right. I mean, things change, things change. Look, we're wasting time. Who cares about us? My mother's in jail. Yeah, we can talk later. Yeah, later. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm just thinking, all right? 
Okay, let, let me see. Let's let's go over it. Uh, this guy, he's into, like, conning women. Right. Not like me. Right. Right. Okay, so let's assume that the killer is one of these women. Okay. But that's my working premise, okay? Okay, you don't have to get mad. I'm not, all right. But not one of these women Inspector Kiss told me had tried to lay charges in the past. The police would be on to them right away. Mm. So it must have been someone who... Nobody knows about. There's probably lots of those. Most women would keep quiet, I mean, if you were made a fool of. Now, the guy traveled all over the place. Most of his arrests were in the States, he used aliases. So this woman, she wouldn't know who he really was, didn't expect to see him again. But she does. She sees him here in Toronto. She follows him, and he comes here. He meets your mother here. So what does she do? Uh, she, she, she wants revenge, and, and she has someone she can blame it on, right? There, my mother. She knows it'll only be a matter of time before he talks himself into her room. So she rents another room, like this one, in the same hotel. Why? Oh, lots of reasons. Um, one, so she can get a key to the mini bar. See, see, these keys are like riding lawnmower keys. They're, they're all the same. It's easier that way. So she rents a room and what? See? No, scotch, right? So she opens up the bottle carefully, laces it with some kind of knockout drug, reseals it as best she can. And what? Knocks on the door and hands it to them? Besides, the door was chained when he was killed. That's right. Nowhere to hide in here, right? Right. Wrong. How about the linen closet? But it's full of shelves. Yeah, but I noticed in Mom's room, look... Uh, put this stuff up on the top shelf, and the shelves sit on plastic tabs, lift off the other shelves, then lean them up against this inside wall. And you have a perfect hiding place where no one would think to look. Just close the door. Right. Okay, so let's see. She she opens up their mini bar with her key, replaces the scotch with her own bottle, right. because, because she knows the guy drinks scotch. It's his drink. Keep going. Then she fixes up the linen closet and waits. They come back, she hides. Everything goes as she planned. When your mother gets up to go into the bathroom, that's her chance. She kills him, and she goes back into the linen closet. Your mother finds him dead, unchains the door, she runs downstairs. She puts the linen closet back in order, she walks out. That's it, isn't it? Has to be. My mother's innocent. But Walker, how did she get into the room in the first place? And how do we find her? I remember saying to my old girlfriend back in Big River, right before I moved to Toronto, I just don't feel the same. We've gone together since grade 10. It's easier to say than it is to hear. I just kept looking at Krista when she wasn't looking at me. I felt like crying. I felt like kicking her crutches out from beneath her and knocking her down on the floor. Down to housekeeping. The woman in charge said yes. They try to restock the mini bars every day, and for certain when someone checks out. Donald Bridges had been murdered Thursday night. How many mini bars in a hotel of 106 rooms were restocked with a bottle of scotch on the Friday? As it turned out, six. And since they had to be charged, she had the room numbers too. A call from Inspector Kiss convinced the manager to let me see the hotel register. Of the six rooms, four had been booked by men, two women. One gave her addresses only Buckinghamshire, England. The other, Etobicoke, at the west end of Toronto. A Mrs. Iris Keithley. She'd used her charge card. Slow down. You're just trying to beat Inspector Kiss there, that's all. No, I'm not. You better calm down, Walker. You look like you're angry with the whole world. Angry with the whole world? Angry with the whole world? Why would I be angry with the whole world? This isn't a Topico. That's the address? Yeah, well, it's the postal address, but it's really called Long Branch. It's right down by the lake. Thank you. Well, you're a cab driver, aren't you? You should know these things. I should know lots of things. 25th Street turned out to be a narrow road that ran right past a filtration plant and then came to a dead end at the end of the lake. And number 86 24th Street turned out to be a little run-down cottage squeezed in among a row of modest houses with tiny backyards and even smaller front yards. I drove by and stopped a few houses down. No sign of Inspector Kiss. Where are you going? Just to look around. Walker, 
Give me a kiss. Please. Give me a kiss. Jeez. What are you doing, seeing how you feel, checking things out? I'm sorry, Walker. I'm sorry. Don't hate me. Are you kidding? How could I hate you? I more or less stumbled out of the car and walked back to the house. There was a car parked beside it, a Buick, almost too big for the driveway, old and rusted out. And beside the car, a garbage can with a large plastic garbage bag tied and sticking out of the top. I didn't see any face in the window, nobody around. So I walked up along the side of the house, quietly pulled out the garbage bag, opened it, and turned it upside down. And there it was, amongst a lot of other stuff, a desk set. A marble stand with pearl inlays and a pearl-handled pen and pencil. But no letter opener. Oh, she was confident no one would connect her with Donald Bridges all right. She could even afford to wait until garbage collection day and in a little plastic bag full of sopping coffee grind, cigarette butts and potato peels, a pair of ladies' white gloves covered with blood and a key to room 512. What are you doing there? What are you doing in my garbage? Get away from here or call the police! Yeah, well, okay, Mrs. Keithley. Let's do that. Call the police. Get out of here! She clung to the door and stared at the garbage spread out on the drive. She was about the same age as my mother. Her face round and flabby and powdered almost orange, two brown lines for eyebrows. She just stared and clung to the door. And then... She disappeared inside the house. Inspector Kiss and his men, they found her locked in the bathroom, huddled on the floor, crying. Here, then. Have this much, at least. I don't want anything to eat right now, Mom. Honest. You never eat. I don't know how you survive. I'll have a cigarette. Wonderful. You're more like your father every day. You even smell like him. What? Smoky. Oh. How's your omelet? Just as good as it should be at these prices. Mm. So you're feeling okay? I'm all right. I didn't do that much time, did I? <laughs> no. Twelve hours. Inspector Kiss is very efficient. Mm. Right. I'm just glad you weren't so foolish as to phone your sisters. <laughs> it would have been mass hysteria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not to mention, like, uh, embarrassing. What was that woman's name? Iris Keithley. She works in a flower shop two blocks from the Rose Hotel. Her husband had died, too. Left her with a nice house, nice car, some savings. And Bridges took it all, except the car. So she rents this little place down by the lake and works in the flower shop. Well, he came in the other day. And she was working in the back. He bought some flowers, and she followed him. The flowers were for you. He met me down in the lobby. Right. At first, she said she was just going to warn you. But you look so smug, she said, so sure of yourself. I was just happy. Mm, anyway, a kind of cold rage took her over. She was sitting in the lobby when you two came back. You kissed. He left, and you went up to the desk to ask if there were any messages. From the girls. Uh, right. You said, Mrs. Mary Devereaux, room 512, to the clerk. And that's how Mrs. Keithley knew. She also knew it would be only a matter of time before he didn't, didn't stop at the lobby. So she rented a room, and the next morning, with a new clerk at the desk, she said, I'm Mary Devereaux, room 512, could you give me an extra key for my daughter? And he did, and that's how she got in the room. Put her doped up bottle of scotch in the front of the mini bar and waited. Walker, mm -hmm. I know this is all very hard for you to understand. I mean, a man and everything. And I'm not even going to try to explain it. I just want you to be on my side, okay? Mom, look. 
always be on your side. Actually, Mom was wrong. It was easy for me to understand. I mean, her wanting somebody? I could understand that. 